in Charleville, in Charleville. Well, I'm in Charleville. It's a 200 kilometer drive north from Kanamala. And this morning I dropped my fridge off at the Angle Service Agent. So that's good, they're investigating that. Then I got my oil changed, went by Outback Spares Charleville and bought some oil and asked if uh, they knew where I could find a place I could change my oil and they offered that I, that I could do it right in the front there. So they gave me a pan and disposed of the oil for me. So that's really great. Thanks Outback Spares Charleville. If you're in the area, stop on by and get your stuff from there. It's good old Outback hospitality. So it was one less thing I had to think about done a bit more traveling than I thought so I'd want to change it now before I head any further inland where it's going to be hard to try and find a place to dispose of used engine oil. I like to change my oil every 5,000 k's just because I spent all the money on getting my engine rebuilt and I'd like to keep my car obviously for many years to come so I give it the best I can afford and every 5,000 k's due to the roughness of the, the terrain it's covering and the type of engine strain I give it a good service over. So that's done. Had a quick under, look underneath again. Found a little engine oil leak. Bit of plumber's tape on the thread. Fixed that. And only a little few drops of engine coolant. I'm still trying to figure out where that's coming from. But I think it may have been left over from when I had the engine coolant changed about three weeks ago. I think they may have spilt some somewhere in the chassis or one of the rails and it's been sitting in there and gradually dripping out now and again but the oil the coolant levels not appear to be doesn't appear to be dropping so yeah everything otherwise is running okay a few little issues all ironed out so i'm stuck here now though and i'll wait until i get the call from the angle service agent and see what's going on but i'm hoping it's it's nothing too major so i've just Got a message yesterday from the Charleville Engel agent and their diagnosis is it's now a failed cooling system. Something to do with there's no gas or, or the oil's leaking out of the motor or something. So I have to get a whole entire replacement which would cost $715 on top of the $370 I already spent to replace the power supply. So that's what $1,085 I'll be spending on a fridge to, re to repair it that's only five years old and done 15 months of touring, which is extremely disappointing. So I've just emailed Engel and seeing if they can investigate this matter and provide me any assistance at all. So I'll just have to wait and see what they come back with. But I've, I've gone ahead with the, the repairs, which is, you know, over a thousand bucks to repair a fridge. I could have bought a brand new fridge again, got a new warranty, but unfortunately that's just too much money to blow. I've, that's, that's, a, that's like a whole month of travel money gone. So we'll see how this goes. It's, it's got to be at least a three-day wait to get the parts from Melbourne or something or Sydney flown up out here. So I'm stuck in Charleville another three days. I'll sit back, try and slow down, do some reading that I've been wanting to do for a while, finish a few old videos I've been meaning to edit, and just see what happens. I'm the Kanamala Fala. I'm in Kanamala. So the fridge has been fixed. And it's been running perfectly the last few days. And thankfully, Engel came on board and helped out a bit. $250 towards the repairs. It turns out the fridge is actually eight years old. But uh, they helped me out because the fridge did fail twice in nine days. Which is odd seeing that the first service agent gave it the rest of a clean bill of health. But then the main actual cooling system failed apparently so the power supply was fine it wasn't a power issue just a cooling issue so the whole entire new cooling you know compressor and everything all the fins all replaced so it's effectively a brand new fridge i'm probably down by about i don't know 700 800 bucks to get it fixed but hopefully from here on in it has no more problems now the second issue the saga continues. This thing, it's still there. So I managed to get British off-road. They thankfully helped out. They had a, a spare uh, barrel from an old Defender that has been wrecked that they didn't need. So they sent it out to me. But unfortunately, somewhere along the line, we got our lines crossed in what 
what was meant to be sent where, and they sent it to Brisbane instead of the Kalamata post office. <laughs> so, the ignition barrel's in Brisbane, and I'm in Kalamata. So I take that as a sign from the universe that I'm not meant to have an ignition switch. So I've just got to keep on traveling, I'll deal with it later, I'll figure out. I've got a, a steering wheel lock on board, that will just have to do. That will stop it from being stolen. And maybe the next time, somewhere down the track, maybe Tibu, Tibu Barra, New South Wales, when I'm he heading into Sturt, maybe they might get the parcel sent out to there or something to that post office. I'll figure it out. So another couple of nights in Kanamala just to prepare, get everything checked over, and then I'm off to Karawinia. In case you haven't been here before, this is the Kanamala Fala. Beautiful statue, really well made, probably one of the best I've seen around Australia. I'm in Yulo, the last town before I head into Karawinya and just booking all my camping permits. I'm booked 10 days. So two, two nights in each of the campgrounds. There's five campgrounds currently in Karawinya. And then I'll see how I go. There's apparently some phone reception at the ranger base, so probably another small cell. So if I need to stay another couple of nights, I might book a few extra nights after that, but I should have enough food and water to last those 10 days fine. And hunger food looks like they also have supplies, diesel and food and hunger food I could purchase if I need to stay longer, but I think 10 days should be enough for me to do most of my exploring and filming. I've just finished the bitumen section, just shortly out of Yulo, and it's back onto gravel now, so I'm just going to reduce my tyre pressures down just a little, just so it's not as rough on the car. Wouldn't need to go too far. Made it into Karawinya. I've only been here about one minute and the fly sent out a welcoming party, so it doesn't take long for them to find you. It's a very simple entrance. Karawinya National Park, so that's really cool. So it's time to stop and have some lunch before I keep on heading in. And then I think I'll just take it easy the rest of the day before I start filming, maybe tomorrow and seeing what different campsites are like. It's not too warm, it's quite comfortable at the moment, just, just enough warmth. And here I'll get to stuck into this sandwich. Hello there, and welcome to Karawinya National Park. I think this is day 12 or 13. This is my 13th night here tonight. So it's been a big project, probably the biggest film I may have made to date. I've got loads and loads of footage to edit. So tomorrow I've got the last night or last morning going to try and refilm some ducks. And then off to Hungerford and Thargaminda and begin editing Carwinia National Park. It'll probably be two or three parts, I'm guessing, at this point in time. And they come in threes apparently, so as you'll see I had another issue with my car with a bolt which holds the alternator on. It sheared straight off. It was a bolt I replaced last year when the original I got lost, it rattled out. And the bolt I put in wasn't high tensile. As it turned out, everything else was. So it sheared under the strain of some of the corrugations out here. But I fixed that up in about three and a half hours. I'm also apparently famous now, officially famous. I've met, I think, five or six followers and subscribers over the last four weeks which is the most I've ever met in a single month. So, yeah, thanks to everyone for saying hello and waving me down. And you see me, it's nice. So now you're watching my films and get some value out of them. Welcome to Thargaminda. I'm in one of the two caravan parks that are available. This is the local council one. And uh, started trying to edit my footage from Carwinia, but it's been ahead of a, a battle the uh, GoPro footage has been causing all kinds of issues, although I had previously edited that Colgoa floodplain video, it had no issues, but I'm trying to mix it with a whole bunch of other footage 
it just keeps crashing the computer. It just doesn't have the power to process the GoPro footage. So hopefully in a, a couple of days time I might have everything beginning to be ready to edit. So it's got to slow me down a bit. But this weekend Thargaminda has on a country music festival for the weekend. So I'll be in town, I might as well head along to that and relax. Listen to the country music. So that's the update at this point in time. Be slow and steady, who knows when I'll get the, the footage edited. It's just gonna be, you know, it could be a bit touchy, might keep crashing the computer if it does and I don't know. Progress has been made on the editing front. Let's step into my office. So I eventually figured out that I was put, trying to put too many files into my computer at once. It couldn't handle the load, so I've only editing two days at a time instead of importing four days worth of footage. So edit two days. I create proxies for all the GoPro footage, which is a smaller file which they use the software uses to edit. And then a few other little minor things I upgraded to the latest video editing software and upgraded windows and a few other things. <clears throat> and it seems to be fairly stable, a few occasional crash. But I'm almost finished the basic edit of part one. So I keep on going and see, see if I can get these done as quick as I can so I can keep on progressing in my trip. So I've got the old ignition switch back together with the new rear part. And thanks to British Off-Road for sending me out a old unit which I was managed to salvage the part inside. So that was really handy. So I'll get around to putting this in at some point. I'm feeling pretty worn out at the moment. So I wait until I head off tomorrow out to Tibubara in New South Wales and then begin filming in Sturt for probably 10 days or so and see what happens from there. But that's good, that's one part that's almost complete now. Otherwise I spent the last four weeks now and... Where am I? Thargaminda. There we go, I've been here four weeks and I'm wrecked. <coughs> But you should have seen virtually all the film now, four parts of Karawinya. It was a massive production, the biggest I've made to date. So it took three and a half weeks of editing. That was about six days a week for around 10 to 15 hours a day. So it was a major uh, strain on me. I'm still sort of recovering. It's about four days now since I finished editing. <clears throat> and I'm starting to question whether I can actually keep that up. I'm thinking maybe I won't do any more editing en route of the, of the big films because I lost the whole entire month of travel and it's already uh, almost mid-August now so by the time I finish filming in Sturt it's going to be September and I got to get to the Simpson Desert before it gets too hot September's got to, it just starts to get a bit warmer in September and I don't want to be traveling too late for the Simpson so I'll film the stuff I'll put it on my hard drives and just have to wait until the end of the year at some point in time, once I get get the chance, I'll start editing all my big, big films. But the vlogs like this, this is quick and easy. I can use my batteries to run the laptop for a few days easy enough. But yeah, trying to do that again, it just lose too, loses too much time and just wears me out too quick. It's too intensive just to get through the amount of footage because I have up to five different cameras I use to film. So I'm trying to mix and match five different cameras worth of footage. And every episode, when I dump the raw footage on the timeline, it works out around two and a half hours of footage. I turn that into around a 24 minute film of a highly condensed story. So it's just too much. Plus the battery just can't handle, and the solar can't handle running a laptop for 10 to 15 hours a day. I might be able to do it one or two days, but it just gets too far behind. And then I've got to let the solar charge it up. So yeah, that's the news tomorrow. Early morning start, head to Tibubara, and we'll take it from there. I left Thargaminda this morning, and I spent about at least four hours or so driving. Uh, it's been a somewhat rough road, a few bad corrugated sections, but otherwise. I'm right on the border now between Queensland and New South Wales, and here's the dingo fence. So this is the longest fence, I think, on earth. So I'm going to stay here just a little bit, have lunch, and then I'll cross on through into New South Wales and head to Tibubara, figure out what I'm doing with the camping for Sturt National Park and then get myself all settled in. Let's let you listen to the silence out here. It's almost like nothing but a couple of flies.
Beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> I do often wonder about the dingo fence, what kind of genetic issues have arisen to all the native wildlife who can't go back and forth anymore. I bet fast forward another 50 years, you might even see the beginning of some sort of variation in, in the animals. Different wallabies or, or kangaroos might develop different ways. It would be an interesting experiment to see how genetics have varied just by cutting off the populations from north and south. Anywho, let's get through the gate. I got 50 k's to go to get to Tibubara. That's from the fence line. The roads here thus far are pretty good. And a fair few concrete sections as well. Anywhere where there's like a creek crossing or low-lying area. But it's a very open country out here. I'll head to Tibubara first, stop in the parks office, get some parks map information then start devising a plan where I'm going to camp first and which areas I'll start filming and how long I'll stay out here for as well. But I'm, I'm guessing 10 days would probably be enough but I might need to extend it. But from what I can tell, in New South Wales you don't need to book online for this park. You can do it like the old way in Queensland where you just get a little money satchel and you pay on spot in the, in the campground a lot easier for me to, to plan ahead and just, just pay as I go. A very beautiful landscape out here. It's like a vast wide open plain. Slight hills, you've got the jump ups back up here. Very subdued colours. Lots of reddish, orange, green, grey. And a beautiful blue sky. So I'm going to have a lot of fun out here exploring. <coughs> you can see far off into the distance. I'll be able to do some new drone shots, I think, quite low to the ground. Because there's just no trees, so... Yeah, it's amazing little place. Very different from Carawinia, just something like 4 500 k's away. And this is just a whole other level of remoteness and vastness, expansiveness. I don't know what I'd eat out here if I broke down. I don't see much of anything. Little shrubs and herbs. It sort of still very, very dry. An occasional bit of a water hole, uh, water creek line, some green herbs in it. Probably some probably in the recent flood back a while back, maybe. Ah, oh, beautiful. Don't want to give too much away now. Just have to wait till I finish my stirt film and then we'll get to take a closer look. I'm in Dead Horse Gully Campgrounds in Sturt National Park. So I've just sat down with the maps and now now need to start planning where I want to go and also work out my fuel calculations to make sure I have enough. I'm pretty sure I do, I've got both tanks full, but then you just never know because I'm backtracking each day doing different places, filming different spots and I can't always film everything on the same day. So I've got my little thing here, I can't remember what this is called, but it's got the two prongs on it, so it's a bit more accurate. And I've got two different maps here, the parks map and then I've got the big HEMA maps. So let's go through here and I'll show you how I do it and work out some, some fuel calculations. So here's all of Sturt. I'm here just at the Dead Horse Scully campgrounds. So I'm thinking at this point I might do this loop first. That gives me a, a couple, few days at least to travel this area. 
and use, use the Dead Horse Scully campgrounds as my base and then probably travel up either through this track or back up to this road and follow along head out to Cameron Corner do that while I'm here back around through any other little sections I may have missed and then down to Tibubara again so the scale here set 10 kilometers just go through 10 actually I'm going to halve that down to 5 approximately Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, five, ninety, ninety-five, four hundred. So it's four hundred and thirty kilometers approximately to do all the loop around. Uh, I'm going to divide that by eight kilometers per liter, which is my fully laden fuel usage for my my car. That's fifty-three point seven five. I'll add a 25% margin of error times 1.25 works out at approximately 67 litres. So need an absolute minimum 67 litres. Today I travelled 400 kilometres and used about 50 litres, so I still have 135 litres remaining. So 135 minus 67, so I have 68 litres. So yeah, 68 litres remaining in my fuel tank as the uh, reserve. That's after I complete the full lap around the park. So I just have a 25% margin of error there, which should be sufficient. But I can do this eastern corner first out to Mount Wood and do the, the loop road there and see what the track conditions are like for to date, just driving in along this Silver City Highway is really good, well-maintained track. Didn't notice anything too particularly rough. So I shouldn't, shouldn't need to refill now in Tibu Barra. I'll just, because obviously the more weight I, I can load up both my fuel tanks and just go for it, but then I'm carrying more weight, which is going to use more fuel consumption. So I'm better off just traveling a bit lighter with less fuel. These 68 liters of reserve, which should be more than sufficient to get me out. And I can just continue to monitor my fuel gauges as I'm traveling and see how far I get. But I've got the two fuel tanks toting 185 liters of diesel which I filled up in Thagaminda before I left. So I feel, I feel pretty confident from my experience over the last uh, three trips around Australia. But in saying that, I did just get a fully reconditioned fuel injection pump fitted about two weeks before I departed Brisbane. So I have noticed my car's a bit more powerful, so I may have added a few more horsepower, and a bit more responsive. So it may be tweaked a bit differently, but we'll see. I'll do this eastern corner over the next few days and then recheck the fuel gauge and do some calculations, but I think that's plenty. Looks like New South Wales parks have a bit bit of a system. Beautiful gas barbecues here to use. So while it's available, I'm gonna get my food on. Save me some gas, as I was using quite a few cans back in Thargaminda and realized it might be difficult to get any more gas en route. Look at that bright sky. This is actually really cold out here now. It's it's changed so much from Thargaminda only like yesterday. It's, it's a lot cooler, probably several degrees cooler. So I was really started, just starting to feel it. I haven't felt cold in quite a while. We had quite warm weather actually, like t-shirt type weather most days throughout the day. And then at night time wasn't that bad. I'm wearing shorts currently. And that's been fine the last few days, but wow, it's... The extra 400 kilometers west makes a difference. Ah, beautiful though, look at that. Just starting to go twilight. Looks like there's only one other car camped here tonight. So it's also a very quiet campground, which is beautiful. And it's only a couple of k's outside of, th outside of Tibu Burra. It's just silence, it's incredible. Nice simple snag on bread. It's usually what I have when I'm sort of too tired to cook anything really fancy. But my first day, so I try and use those snags up easy until I get settled in and then I can 
start cooking up some more fancy meals and add the vegetables in. I'll get stuck into this and then get some of my camera gear ready and off to bed. Here we are, at least seven weeks or more on, and I'm ready to replace the ignition switch. So I've put the Aldite glue around again and glued it on, so this time this one should not fail, hopefully. So let's stick it all back in, and connect it up, and see how we go. Get rid of the old switch, it's done pretty well. I always carry a spare switch with you when you're traveling, just in case something does fail on your main board, gives you an option. Now it's been so long, I can't remember exactly which one goes where, so I've got a internet access here thankfully, I looked it up. One. So power back on, we'll do a test before I bolt it all back in. Great, all works fine. Finally complete, everything's back together. The cowling's back on. That's beautiful. Probably one of the longest jobs we've had to wait to get it fixed, but that's just how it goes. Wasn't anything major. So, I'll go for a bit of a walk and see what's around here. A massive opportunity has just presented itself so all my plans from here on in are going to change and I'll be taking a really big detour down south. So stay tuned and see what's going to happen. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to help support the creation of more videos and see behind the scenes and bonus content, join me on Patreon. Click on the Patreon button on the site now. Thanks for watching.